Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. Thank you for your presence, Lord. Thank you for what you're doing, Lord. We magnify your name. Thank you, Jesus. You take me in this place. Just keep praising the Lord and uh, they're going to bless you with with some, uh, Susan's going to, here Susan stand in front of this we'll move that out of the way for a second praise the Lord thank you Jesus 
Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We praise you, Father. Lord, we bless your name, the yes, Holy God. Lord. You're a holy Lord.
service today to yes. just enter in and to yes. give him praise and give him Ooh. honor and give yes. him glory. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Because that's what our purpose. Yeah. Okay, this piano is gone. Yeah. How do you turn this thing on? But it's not making any sounds. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Anyway. Our purpose on earth is to give praise and glory unto God. Yes. Yes. But I I just thank him today. Yes. Well, it's not doing anything. You know, it's not doing anything. Because I've already done that. Okay. <clears throat> this is an older song. all know what you sing it with me. Thank you, Jesus. For I was
to be that habitation yes. for his presence to dwell. Yes. It's like she said, sometimes we let things come in between and everything else usually, you know, they let everything else come in between instead of taking that, that place in God that he wants us to be. Yes. Amen. He wants to inhabit. You know what he said? I inhabit the praises of my people. So if you want to start letting him inhabit, you start with your praises. Amen. Start with your praises. Start with your worship. Start with your, and I tell you right now, you can praise your way right out of prison. Yes. You can praise your way right out of things. Amen. Yes. I know you can because I've seen it. I've done it. Amen. Yes. You've done it so much. So we can praise ourselves out. You know, praise him when you don't feel like it. You know, maybe some people didn't feel good. And some people here today don't feel all that good. But you know what? It's not in our feelings. It's in them. It's in our faith. Not our feelings. Praise the Lord. We walk by faith. Not by sight. Not by feeling. Not by... Oh, amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. I want Brother Ronald, if he will, to come. Brother Ronald Daltrey. And I want him to greet you and, and share some. And then after that, Bishop's going to come and, and, and give the word of the Lord too. Amen. Aren't we blessed? Yes. You know, we're blessed to have... Come on up. We're blessed to have the men and women of God that come our way. I love your son too. Amen. We have to let him do that meditation. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Use this one then give that to Bishop. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank Praise you. the Lord, everybody. Yes, thank you, Jesus. Good to be in the house of yes, the Lord again. So good, Lord. So good. I thank tell you, you to feel the presence and the <clears throat> power of the Almighty God walking Ooh, in this place. Yes, sir. Yes. He was here. <clears throat> when he comes, I go crying. Amen. Yes, Jesus. Amen. It's so I can't help it. So awesome. yes. But his presence was so strong yes. here in this place. Amen. So just reach out and yes. touch the Lord. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Receive the need that you have. Yes, whatever we need. Because He is big enough, God enough, Amen. got power enough, yes. already paid the price. Hallelujah. You've already been purchased. Yes. All we got to do is receive. Yes. <laughs> receive. Yes. This is one thing I've been asking the Lord. See, God, we know you have all power. We know what all you've done, but how do we receive what you've done? Yeah. Oh, I know how to do it. Yeah, yeah. Well, I want you to talk to me yeah. when we get through. But, but God is doing, doing something in the earth yes, different than what he's been doing. Yes. There's an outpouring coming. Yes. Different than what you've ever experienced because it's going to be a manifestation. It's just not going to be like in the Bible where you running and jumping and hollering like little children because that's what children do. But this outpouring is going to be a manifestation of the presence of the living God in the power that is in the presence of God. But I'm going to tell you something else. I heard the Lord saying to me a couple of days ago, three three days ago, maybe. Yes. But one of the things, one of the attacks that's going on in the body right now, the enemy is attacking your faith. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, it is. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, it is. I've had mine attacked. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. But I'm here to tell you, you can be on the lookout. Because the enemy is going to try to attack your faith. But Jesus is all powerful. Yes, he is. And he's able to keep you. And he will keep you. You know, <laughs> we can say all the things we want to say. We can do all the things we want to do. But it's not worth the hill of beans except we hear from the Lord. That's right. You know, a lot of times people think when you get the Holy Ghost, that you're super spiritual. Yeah. But it's not because of your merit that you get the Holy Ghost. It's not your goodness the reason why you receive the gift. It's the goodness of the giver that gave you the gift. <laughs> so God is doing some things. He, he's bringing some chastisements. He's bringing some discipline, some purging uh, within the body because he's bringing us to a place of holiness. The walk is going to get tighter and harder. You can mark it on your calendar today. The walk, the Lord is going to require more out of us than he's ever required out of us. Because he's fixing to do 
a new thing in the body to bring us to a place of maturity. He's let us walk around as children for a long time, but now he's calling us to a place of maturity. And I want to talk a little bit. I don't know just what I'm going to talk about. But but the city in Revelation 21, that city is the bride, which is the body of the Lord. The wall, I'm going to read a few scriptures maybe here about the walls and about the gates. Uh, but in this city, there's 12 <laughs> gates on the city. And it says each gate is of several, each several gates is of one pearl. Now he didn't say the gates were made out of pearl. And a pearl, this pearl that he's talking about is a different than a pearl like we know pearl. But these gates in this wall is an entrance into the kingdom. Each one of them has a different application, a different realm, a different place that you can find it. And you're not going to stumble in there through carnality. You're not going to accidentally find it. You're going to find it because you have been seeking the face of God and hearing by the Spirit of the Lord what thus saith the Lord. And he's calling us to a place of intimacy, a place of walking in union and in harmony with him. And once we get into this city, into the maturity, what you're seeing over there is the bride, but it's a, it's a bride that has prepared herself for the husband. It's done come to maturity. Uh, I believe in Revelation 11, he, he gave him a reed to measure the temple. He measured that temple for a purpose because he measured it against the Lord Jesus Christ. Over there in the 11th chapter of Revelation, yes. the body had not come to maturity yet. It was still in process, and it's still, in, just like we are right now, we're still in process. Yes. The Lord bringing us from one glory to another glory. Yes. But, but Jesus is that wall around that city. Lord, yeah. Hello. One yes. He is the wall around the city. Yes. Yes. And each time his life is growing up in us from one glory to the next glory. Yes. From one rim to the next rim. Yes. He's bringing us to a place that no enemy can get in to do any harm. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank the word says except the Lord keeps the city. Yes. The watchman watches in vain. So the Lord is building a house, and He's building a many-membered body. And they go, the Lord is going. I'm going. I ain't going to go into all this stuff. Going to take a lot to go into it because I ain't got but a few minutes. But the Lord is bringing the people to a place of maturity to where they can become a praise in the earth. Yes. 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 He's not calling us into this end part. He's bringing us to a place of fullness. Yes. We've been in the end part, Rem, but he's bringing us to that place of fullness where we can bear his character, bear his yes, Jesus. nature, Thank you, Jesus. his characteristics, Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. to be like him. He's bringing us to a place where we've been apprehended so we can apprehend what we've been apprehended to receive. That's right. So that we can possess the possession that he's got for us. Yes. Peter said we have an inheritance in heaven reserved until the last time. Yes. The last time is not a date on your calendar. Right. No. No, it is. Did you hear me? Amen. That's right. It is not a date or time on your calendar. Right. The end time, the last time, yes. is the fullness and the consummation Jesus. of a crown work that God is doing on people. Thank you, Lord. Yes. When he gets them to full maturity, gets them into this place, Thank you, Lord. then you're going to see things really change. Because God is bringing us into the light. How many know the Bible says if our eye be single, mm -hmm. our body is full of light. The Bible says that he is the light of that city. Yes. Now, if you want to get into that city, you can go through one of those gates. Yes. 
if you can find that, that entrance, you can go in there. Uh, it says that the gates have the names of the tribes of the children of Israel written on those gates. Yes. Each one of those names has a meaning. And if you'll look them up and look up the scriptures, you can find an entrance into this city. Now, the Lord told Nicodemus you had to be born again. Hallelujah. That's one of the first stars. We found that one. But how many of those things have been imputed to us, like righteousness and this kind of stuff, yeah. because they were freely given, because we come into the kingdom. Yes. But the Lord is bringing the people together to be clothed in their house from heaven. They're going to put on a robe of righteousness. Yeah. They're going to walk in holy. It's time that we stop talking the talk and yes. start walking the walk. Yes. Now, we can talk it as big as we want to. But the thing about it is, what have we experienced in it? What's our experience in God? That's how you can measure where we are in God, is how our experience is in God. How much power do we have? Do we have enough power to blow out a match? Or blow out a candle? Or are we just still a flickering light on a candle? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, But the Lord is bringing a people together in unity. Each one, each one in unity yes. with him, in union with him, to abide with him. Yes, he is. But one of those gates, on the 12 gates, and I'm going to just hit even younger, because I think sometime when we come back, maybe the, we can get into it more. But like Reuben, there's three tribes on each side, north, south, east, west of the city. Same way it was set up in the tabernacle, the same way in Solomon's temple. All of it coincided and come together. Yes, sir. But those gates are praise. The walls are salvation. In fact, let me turn over here. Just one second. I tried to mark some of these over. That was a long time. Thank you, Lord. In Isaiah 60, 18, it says, Violence shall no more be heard in thy land, wasting no destruction within thy borders. But thou shalt call thy walls salvation mm -hmm. and thy gates praise. Yes, there you go. That's the so That's the, the gates are praise. Mm -hmm. Yes. In 62, Isaiah 62, verse 6 and 7, says, I have set watchmen upon thy walls, O Jerusalem, which shall never hold their peace day nor night. Ye that make mention of the Lord, Keep not silence, and give him no rest till he establish, until he make Jerusalem a praise in the earth. Yes. Make him what? Praise. Well, praise. praise in the earth. Mm -hmm. See, a lot of times we think we got to have music to praise the Lord. Yeah. And that is one type of praise. Yes. Yeah. But look at Jesus. God ruled his mind. Yes. He was a perfect praise in the earth. He done everything that the Father wanted. Mm -hmm. He bore his character, his nature, his obedience, yes. his power, everything. Mm -hmm. And that's what the Lord is bringing the people up to be, is to walk in that place. He said that when he appears, we shall be like him. Yes. So how are we going to get there? There are different realms. Like in the temple, there's a governmental realm. Twelve is a divine government of God. Now, 12 squared is 144. Mm -hmm. 144 cubits is the measurement of that wall. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Around that city, which is the fullness of 12 yes. and the divine government of God, yes. which is in its fullness mm -hmm. all that you can get. There is no enemy that can cross that line. Amen. There was nothing that anybody, the devil, the scribes, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, none of them could do to him. No. Because he had that built up in him. Thank you, Jesus. He had the Father's character expressed. He was a very expressed expression of the Father. Yes. When you've seen him, you've seen the Father. That's it. And the Lord is bringing us to a place that when yes. you see us, you're going to see Jesus. Yes, yes. So I don't believe that. I don't care. It don't make it not real. This is the place that the Lord has brought us to, to bring us to. Everybody's not going there. 
No, Some right. people is called to be brides. The bride. Thank you. That's what the city is. But then there's a temple in that city. Yes, sir. And the one that's called to that temple place is going to be the son of God. Jesus. And that's what Reuben, that first one gate says Reuben. Reuben it means behold a son. This is the sonship spirit that comes. Where the Lord is trying to raise up a son. You can find it in Revelation chapter 12. Where the man child is caught up into the throne. He said to the overcomer, to him that overcome, yes. I will grant to him to sit with me in my throne as I am sitting down with my father in his throne. Yes. Yes. So he's bringing the people to that place. Yes, he is. Yes. But then there's a people that's going to be the bride that will never reach that place. That's the reason why there's a 30, 60, and 100 fold yes. there that we come to. Yeah, that's good. But I want to read another scripture here. Because a lot of times, Jesus. We uh, put things off. I had the Lord to tell me, I don't know, a few years back. I was thinking about it, meditating on the Word and Jesus. different things. I said, Lord, in the day of the Lord, in the, in the day of the Lord, you know, in the day of the Lord, yes. <laughs> one day in the day of the Lord. Yes. And the Lord spoke to me and He said, Son, you're in the day. Amen. It's all, that's what it says about this city. There's no day and night there. I mean, it's day. It's always day. There's no night. So this night that we're at now, we have not totally come into to what we can come into because we've always said one day, henceforth. One day, when the Lord does this, one day, one day. Oh. Thank you, Jesus. In Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 22. But ye are come. Everybody say that. We are come. But ye are come. Yes. Say it again. We are come. Ye are. That means what? We all read there. Amen. Right? Yes. Yes. We are come unto Mount Zion and unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to an innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly, listen to what it's saying, and the church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven, and to God the judge of all, and to the spirits of just men made perfect. Mm -hmm. Now where are we? Yeah. The word says we are seated together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. So we're already in heaven, but we're climbing a mountain. Yes. That mountain is Mount Zion. And I know that a lot of people want to get raptured. And we are being raptured. Mm -hmm. yes. But when, when you get into the kingdom, you're already seated in heavenly places. Yes. And what he's doing now is bringing us up from rim to rim, glory to glory, line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little, there a little, yes. until we get to the top of Mount Zion. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Where the 144,000 sons are standing on Mount Zion. Thank you, Jesus. That 144 is the fullness of the completeness, all you can be, all you can get out of 12. And that is the divine government of God. And that divine divine government of God is that wall yes. that is surrounding that city. And the Lord is keeping that city. Yes. Yes. Did you notice that in this city, mm -hmm. it doesn't say anything about anybody coming out of it. Right. Don't go in and go out <laughs> it just says that you have entrances in you go no more out. Did you notice it said there was no night? You know how come there's night? It's like, like in our natural earth. This earth is turning, and it's turning away from the sun, so we have night. And this is what happens in the spirit when we turn away from the Lord and start doing our own thing. We have night to come. It starts getting darker and darker, you know. 
But as long as we're walking in the very presence, word, living word, yes. the very present living word, yes. we are walking in fullness of that day. Can you say amen? amen? Amen. We are walking in the very presence of Almighty God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. The Lord said to me the other day in church. He said, I, I, I give a word in church. He said that I am walking in the midst of this people. Yes, thank you, Lord. In my presence. Mm. I never had the Lord tell me that before. Thank you, Lord. But you know, he used to come down and walk with Adam in the cool of the day. He's always come down. I know everybody thinks they're going up. Thank you, Jesus. But if you read the scriptures, all the way. Yes. All the way from the beginning to the end, God has always come down. He told Moses, he said, build the tabernacle according to the pattern that I give you, and I'll come fill it. I'll come dwell with you. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Solomon, the same thing. So he, he come to fill that house so that the ministers couldn't even minister. He always come down. He come down to Moses on Mount Zion. He come down to Noah in the ark. He's come down to us in Jesus Christ. And now he's bringing us up you, in the spirit realm to where he's at. Yes. So Paul said over there, I believe it's in 2 Corinthians chapter 12. He said, I knew Christ once after the flesh, but henceforth no more do I know him after the flesh. Amen. So we've got to get out of the carnal mind and the carnal thinking and the carnal walk yes. and get into the spirit of the living God to where we can hear what the spirit is saying. Because yes. I'm telling you, we better keep our eyes upon the Lord like Sister was saying a while ago. Keep your eyes, this is what I've been saying. Yes. Keep your eyes upon the Lord so keep that this fear does not Jesus. grip your heart. Yes. Keep them on Jesus. Because I don't care what's going on. I'm not worried about what Biden's doing. I'm not worried about what Trump's doing. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Because they can't neither one do what Jesus can do. Amen. The only thing I know is that God is victor. Amen. Yeah. He's already won. Yeah. He's never lost the battle. Yeah. So we can put our trust and our faith in him because he has never lost yeah. right. anything he started, he finished it. Yeah. And here's one more thing. I've told y'all this before. The Lord told me, he said, I am never late. Amen. Amen. Always on time. Always on time. Yes. Always on time. Yes. It may seem late. It may seem like he's not going to move at all. But he's always right on time. And you know what's so good about it? All these trials, all these situations we go through, it's for our own good. I've just now began to learn how to be really grateful and thankful for all the stuff that I thought was killing me, and it was. You know, I just learned to be grateful that these trials come my way because it was working something in me. It was causing me to be changed and transformed into the image of the living God. And there's nothing that can be any better than to be walking in the spirit like Jesus did. He said, I don't believe there'll ever be anybody here like that. Well, there will be. Yes, yes, sir. We're going to be walking in the fullness of the Lord. With the authority and power to, when you speak the word, when you speak the word, the spirit and the word become one living in you, yes. and you speak that word, mm -hmm. that word will happen. Yes. The Lord told me, once you hear my voice, or you see something by the spirit, he said, it's my time, and that's when I, you can do it. But anything we do before that, we're out of order. Right. Not going to happen. I don't know why you see so much failure right. in the churches. Because you see people up in the flesh right. prophesying by the soul instead of the spirit. And, and the Lord's kept us speaking to stop some of that. Yes, thank you, Lord. Because he's drawing, we got to be speaking the oracles of the living God or you're going to get in trouble. Amen. we got to hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying. Yes. Can't get up here no more and just... Put on a show and have a great personality. I know I'm not a good speaker. Don't try to be. 
I don't even try to be like anybody. I'm just me. And a lot of times people get offended by what I say. But I, I don't mean to offend them. But if the word offends you, you need to be offended. Because usually the people that get offended want to blame the one that said something. But really the, the offense is in them. They, the, the problem is within that person. And they need to take a look in that area. Jesus. But anyway, I was saying Reuben, and then you have a Simeon, which means hearing. Yes. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the church. Then you have Levi. Mm -hmm. You know, he said, Faith, I'm going to go back to Simeon. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God, mm -hmm. the living Word of God. Yes. Not just by hearing a letter, you got to hear it by the Spirit. Yes. Simeon, like it means union. Joined together. He that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. Yes. These are entrances into the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Into the kingdom. Into the city. All one pearl. <laughs> huh? All one pearl. Well, all one pearl. And it, that pearl is great prize is Jesus. Yes. And then if you come right on like I was saying a while ago, Judah. Judah means praise. Yes. The Lord said he's going to make us be a praise in the earth. Yes. And I'm looking forward to that. Yes. I want to be a praise in the earth. Amen. I want, I'm like my wife. We want to, for people to see God in us. Yes. We want to have, be lived a life that God can be receive glory from us. Yes. From the life that we live. Yes. From the life yes. that we walk. Thank you, that people can see a difference. You know. People that went over around Jesus, some of them called him a devil, wine bearer, everything else, gluttoner, or whatever. <laughs> but there were some that saw him for who he really was. Yes, yes. And that was a great gift. And if we see by the Spirit what the Lord is saying and doing, we are blessed beyond measure. Amen. Yes, we are. To be able to hear what yes, the Spirit is saying. Because everybody's not hearing it, I can tell you, oh, yes, what the Spirit so is saying so in, so in this hour and in this day. But I'm telling you, he's growing up some people. Yes, he he's growing up some people. Yes. You don't want to be left out. Yes, and I tell you something else. The Lord is knocking on the heart. Yes. You say, well, I've already received him. He's knocking on the heart for more. Yes. He wants to come in. Yes. He wants to take over your land. He wants yes. to take over our land. He wants us to yes. walk in the fullness of what he is so that he can be seen in the earth again. Yes, and he's going to have it. I'm telling you, be encouraged. Yes, yes. Be encouraged. Don't get your eyes on all this stuff that everybody's saying and what's going on. China's going to do this. Russia's going to do that. They've been doing that ever since the beginning. Man is going to have war and rumors of war. The carnal mind, because that's what the carnal mind does, it has nothing to do with the kingdom of God. Thank you, Jesus. It's not going They can get into over there where they... They can get over there and review freight these where they're supposed to have them 200 million soldiers or whatever to get killed. They can get over there and kill them all. It's not going to help you one bit for the kingdom. That's right. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. It's all by the Spirit. Amen. And if you receive anything from God, you're going to receive it by the Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Can everybody say amen? Amen. How I many know He is Lord? He is Lord. He is King. He is Father. I was telling somebody the other day, I think it might have been Pastor here. I, I was telling them the other day, I, I was, I've been there back years ago when the Lord started dealing with me about the Godhead. And I was asking him, I said, Lord, how do I pray? Do I pray to Jesus or do I pray to you or do I, how, how do I pray? You know, and that, he, I'd been praying that for a few months there. Hadn't wasn't even thinking about it. But one day I come home from work when my dad was staying with us at the time. I mean, he and I were sitting on the front porch and he was in the swing and I was in a rocking chair over there and we were talking. And he was just talking to me. But I heard the voice of the Lord above what my dad was saying. <laughs> and he answered my prayer of what I was asking him. <coughs> and he said, your dad's name is Fred, but you call him Daddy. Yes. <laughs> he said, my name is Jesus, but you call me Father. Yes. 
See how, how quick the Lord can straighten up mess. There is no confusion in God. If you see confusion, you're in Babylon. <laughs> but anyway, I'm going to turn it over to our brother. I, I, there's a lot I can say. I, I didn't really get into this, but if you look up the names of those gates, those the tribes of the children of Israel, yes. you'll get a lot of understanding Amen. of how to enter in in a, in a way Jesus. and the entrance for God. I believe it's in Job 28 where it says that the, the vultures and the lions or whatever it is, Says they can't, they don't see this. The carnal mind is not going to see the entrances in. They're going to walk right past it, and you're not going to just stumble into it or make an error and get in there. Because the Lord said in Matthew chapter 13, somewhere around 45, 46, 47, about a merchant man saw a per, a, a pearl. Yes. He sold all that he had and went and purchased that pearl. Yes. Now, a lot of people think that's the sinners, but sinners don't have nothing to sell. No. <laughs> Lack, limitations, sin, that's darkness, right. death. That's right. Ain't nobody going to buy that. That's right. But Jesus yes. emptied himself, yes. took on the form of a servant, come in the flesh, yes. died upon the cross, Amen. and purchased us. Yes. The church is the pearl of great price. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. The church. Did you hear me? The church. The Lord saw in that body of people, that pearl, that church that was so precious to him that he, he left his glory. He left the, that he had with the Father. He left it all and come to buy that church. And just like Eve was taken from Adam. Now, there's a through the resurrection power of Jesus Christ, there's a body, a female. And this could bring on something that would cause confusion, but there's a, we made after the image of God, male and female. He took the soul out, the, the female part out of Adam and made Eve out of the ribs. So he's doing the same thing in the spirit realm now that come out of the body of Jesus. Now he's raising up because he made a way that where he was, we could come. He went to the cross and died and was resurrected so that we could have life and have it more abundantly yes. and come to him so that he could form this church yes. in the earth. Yes. And when he left, he didn't have it structured. It was unstructured. He just told them, hey, boy, I'm leaving. <laughs> and they, they got all confused. That's the reason why in the 14th chapter uh, of John, he said, let not your hearts be troubled because they all got fear. Was in fear? Yes. They were all afraid. They was confused. If you read right on down, it'll tell you the whole thing. Yes, it does. But he was talking to the disciples, but he went to the cross to prepare that place for us. Yes. So that where he was, we could be. Amen. So God is doing some great things and he's drawing us together and he's opening our eyes to be able to see by the Spirit what the Spirit is saying unto the church. And he's saying unto the church, grow up. Yes. Amen. 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 Come on, brother. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Thank you, Praise the Lord. Praise your name. Wonderful. Thank you, Jesus. Bless you, brother. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Set that Bible on that stool. Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord. Isn't that good? Yes. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. We are coming in and, and have come in yes. to a new day in God. Yes, yes. And uh, you heard a lot of it there. And, yes. and it's, it's got to be ministered. Yes. <clears throat> it's got to be said. Sure. And, and a lot of, one place, and I'm not going to go chasing it because I don't even know where it is. But he said that there's a people that have to declare a day. And you only can declare the day that you're in. When the time of salvation came, we declared the day. Billy Graham was the last great uh, salvation preacher. He didn't understand much about the Holy Ghost or Pentecost. He wasn't called to do that. R.W. W. Schenbach, A. A. Allen, <clears throat> they were brought into a Pentecostal time in which they declared that day. Yes. 
And they weren't supposed to bring us into something else. But how many know there's Passover and there's Pentecost and there's Tabernacles? Now, if they were the ones that did Passover and they were the ones that did Pentecost, then who's the ones to do Tabernacles? Did you hear what he said? There is a people <clears throat> that are coming forth now that's going to declare this day. And I want to turn to the book of Philippians real quickly. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. And just try to tie up. I like to work with somebody. I've seen so many preachers in 50 years. Next year, yeah. next June, I'll be a Christian in 50 years. And I'm going to celebrate. Hallelujah. Lord willing, and lets me live, and I plan to. I don't have no truck with the grave. I believe in life and immortality. I don't believe I have to die. I don't believe I'm going to die. If I do, I go on to be with the Lord. It's a win-win. Right. Uh, we used to make a big deal out of it. You didn't want to go by way of the grave, and everybody got all upset. I never worried about it one way or the other. To be absent from this body is present with the Lord. To be in this body is to be with the Lord. I'm with the Lord either way I go. <laughs> So, anyway, in the in the book of Philippians, and I'll have to get my glasses parted. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. Hallelujah. I'm doing better. Last time I was up here, I dropped everything, and we had the camera going and <laughs> playing pickup sticks. <laughs> but in the book of Philippians, he. He's writing to the church in Philippi, and uh, he writes, of course, he's in jail. How many know God will always use you at your lowest time? Someone asked me, they said, well, why can't we stay in a high place praise? I said, we can. And he said, well, we don't. I said, I know. He said, well, why is that? I said, because when the darkness comes, and it will come. You heard what he said, when that thing turns, he's going to have some darkness. Now, if, if anybody's perfect, then they're, they're in the light. But most of us are not there yet. So there's going to be periods of darkness that come in. And when the darkness comes, most of us go to sleep in the natural. We're supposed to. Most of us in the spiritual kind of go to sleep too. We're not supposed to. But when the darkness comes, we don't embrace the darkness. We run from it. We hide from it. We pray against it. We preach against it. We're taught against it. Here's the, here the one common word, against. But there was a song written, oh, I don't know, probably in the 90s now. But it was, y'all y'all sung it here once. I think Crystal did. Go light your candle. Run to the darkness. Whoa. Thought we were supposed to run from it. You see, when you light that candle, you begin to run toward that darkness. Let me just tell you this. If you begin to embrace the darkness, not sin, but if you embrace the darkness, not be afraid of it, hear that word, not be afraid of it, and, and begin to say, what can I do in the dark? You'd be surprised what you can do in the darkness. Look at what the evil folk do. In, in, in the Bible, most of the bars weren't open. When the, when the time of Pentecost came, everybody said they're drunk. Peter said, no, the bars ain't open till 3 o'clock, which is after the sacrifice in the Hebrew. Don't want to get into all of that. But how many understand, there's dark stuff going on all the time. And we need to know that when the darkness is there, there's light that can be coming in. The spirit of man. Is the candle of the Lord and the Holy Ghost lit? Not going to light. The Holy Ghost lit that candle. When? On the day of Pentecost. Up to there, how many know? We experience salvation, and your candle has become the Spirit of the Lord, and the, and the Spirit of man becomes the candle of the Lord. But it really don't get lit. Until that wind of fire comes in and lights it. And now we've come into a place where he's making us, his ministers, his angels, flames of fire. And we're going to have to start bringing that candle out from under that bushel. And 
And so Paul writes to the church in Philippi, and he says here, and I want to start in 7. I can spend several different hours in Philippians and don't want to do that. He said, but what things were gained to me, those I counted loss for Christ. Never once does he knock prosperity. And I'm not even talking about that. Actually, I want you to prosper and be in good health. But that's what Jesus said. But Paul said, everything that I got, my new car, my savings bond, my, my job, my health, my beautiful wife, whatever you have, my wonderful husband, uh, my, my new chicken, I got a brand new rooster and he's really, you know, my horse. Whatever you had that was really nice, you have to come to a place where you realize that, but you set it aside for something greater. And he said, everything that I got, I said it was a loss compared to Christ. When Christ came in, he just upped the ante of the poker game. And he made it where I couldn't be. And I had to just say, okay, I got all these winnings. I just leave it there, but I want to come up here. He never once had to get rid of it. So many Christians think that you got to be barefoot and poor and all to serve God. And we, and we who came to Pentecost were taught that. Money, money, that's the devil. No, it didn't say that. It said the love of money. The coveting of money, the improper use of money, the wrong distribution of money is the root, not the evil, it's the root. The root is that which is lodged in there. If you water it, if you hoe it and weed it, you grow it. But if you don't do nothing to it, just keep weeding your garden, that root is staying there. There's a little white thing on them roots. They call the nodule. And it's a little white little, and it's got the life of that plant in it. The DNA is in there. And as long as it's in there, it'll stay in there. But let me know, you can have that DNA of sin right in that root. And as long as you keep your garden peeled, it'll never go no farther. Well, somebody needs to say amen right there. You're in chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3 and verse 7. But what things were gained to me. Those I kind of lost for Christ. Now listen to what he says. Yes, doubtless, without a doubt. I count all these things. They're all important. But I count them with loss. Because here's the word I want you to get. For the excellency of the knowledge of Jesus Christ, or Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and then I count them, but we would use a modern word today, and I don't want to use it, but we would. Everybody pretty much does. That I may win Christ. He counted it refuse. He counted it a waste product. All that good stuff. Now, he's not throwing nothing away. Hear me. He's not throwing away anything. He's saying that in comparison to the excellency of Jesus Christ, the rest of this stuff is as manure. Whoo, that's tough preaching. Because we don't want to let go of our nice pickup. We don't want to let go of our bass fishing collection. I'm not preaching to you, I'm preaching to me. We don't want to let go of that nice new SUV that you just got that I'm paying for. Come on, be real. There's stuff that God has blessed us with. But sometimes we get more attached to the stuff than we do to Him. Because He's the one provided. He's Jehovah Jireh, my provider. We get in, we understand all that. But how many know there's a difference in knowledge of intellect and a deeper knowledge? And that's where Paul's heading. And, and a lot of Christians, especially in our day, when prosperity is preached by the, the, the great preachers, and that's about all they're preaching. I don't want to be uh, against anyone, but you turn on the, 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 the nominal church or the, 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 the electric church, the communicative church, whichever device you're using, they're not standing against much. They're not prophetically attracting you to, to much. They're not historically basing you to much. So what's left to preach? Money. I don't mind preaching for money. Hear what I'm saying. 
I don't mind preaching for that. But Paul said, See, it, don't, it don't really matter what I say. I ain't got nothing written in this book, brother. I, I, I'm just up here. There ain't nothing you, you won't quote from me. You quoted from Paul. And from and, and, and all of us do. So there's a difference. And so whatever I whatever I got and count as value, you, you may not even hold that as value. But whatever we have, Paul is saying, yes, you can keep it, but it's just in that lower realm because there's an excellency that I'm looking for, that I'm after, that I'm attaining. Ooh, when we get a hold of that, you watch revival break out. And as Brother Ron was bringing in, brought a good word, tremendous word. And how many know as we move into this day, we can't move in as Pentecostals. I ain't stepping on you, puppy, or your doghouse. That's not what I'm... I've come here enough to know you all know I don't want to hurt you. But I need to tell the truth, too. We ain't coming in to save people. How many saved? Okay. See, then we, we, we need to move on. I ain't going to preach you today, bless God, you need to be saved. Because if you do, right there, somebody get there, somebody with the Holy Ghost come and pray them through. That's, that, that's it. That's my altar call. Now, I'm not making fun of putting anybody down, but I'm, I'm like, well, I only got one shot and a few minutes to do it in. How many know that Pentecost is over? Now, let me balance it. That that we were supposed to get, that that we were supposed to attain, that which was the good, the gold, the good stuff, out of the salvation realm he brought into the Pentecostal realm. But he left all the religion behind. Now the, the, the system of men didn't. They brought all the religion with them. And a lot of folk got saved don't know the difference. So you have denominationalism, Catholicism, schism, this schism, and all of those other schisms. The Chisholm trail and all of that stuff is in there. But God brought in an excellency. The excellency of His Spirit transformed the good out of Passover into Pentecost and then takes the good out of Pentecost yeah, how many know when we left Pentecost, there's a lot of stuff that we left there. I hope you left it there. It wasn't a God. Now balance it. There's a lot of stuff you should have brought from Pentecost in here. To tabernacles. Now catch it. Don't fall out with me. Everybody's saying, well, what is the matter with you today? Well, I, I'm, just, I'm, living, I'm trying to be a part of that people. How many know we want, every day a God starts in darkness? Every time God makes a move, it's in darkness. And every time it's in darkness, you've got to have a light under your feet and a lamp under your path. But because no man can see what to do because it ain't daylight, it's dark. And how many know if you've looked around, we're living in one of the darkest times. I'm only 74 years old, so I don't go back too far. But in my little old 74 years, I ain't never seen it this bad. Not just in the natural. We've seen churches close. Not system churches, kingdom churches. COVID. This and that. Schisms and arguments over whether you break the bread this way or that. All, and, and, and all that's happened and all that's here. And we're walking in a dark place. Especially if you're getting older. The older you get, the more dark it becomes. Because the less your natural vision, your natural, everything begins to fall apart and break down. Okay. Does that mean that we quit? What's the answer? No. I didn't hear you. No. One more time. No. All right. You see, we, we've got to adjust ourselves from natural to spiritual. From spiritual to natural. Ascend and descend that ladder of Jacob's. Learn to walk that stairway to heaven. Learn how to do those things. God's not just going to snatch you up and say, Now, you old man, pew, made you a young man. Oh, bless God, I wish he would. We'd go save North Korea real quick. Get rid of one of the problems. Or Iran, or you pick one. <laughs> China. China. Y'all pray for Doug Turnbull up here in Charlotte, Tennessee. Uh, we're going to be with him in October the first week and and uh, the third week they're going to Ukraine. <coughs> and that's not a good place to be. Now, I appreciate somebody wanting to go. I mean, no, God don't. Brother Ramos, God don't get stopped. God didn't stop in the darkness. That's where it started. 
How many know somebody's got to function in the darkness? So they go into the Ukraine. His name is Doug Turnbull. Be praying for him. Prophet of God. He's a dear, dear friend of mine. And he's, he's back to our ministry when well, <laughs> if there hadn't been his check come in, there wouldn't have been no food on the table. I appreciate that. Appreciate all you all do. But I got to get back to this. But how many, what I'm saying is, is that we're living in a time of darkness. You can't be afraid. You can't quit. And you can't run, you can't hide. If you do run, you do hide. Where would you go but to the Lord? Where could I go but to the Lord? I can stay under a rock. Somebody will find me. I can fly up into wherever. He ain't there. David said way back there, if I take the wings of the morning, if I swim to the, the deepest sea and get on a deserted, deserted island, wherever I go, whatever I do, there you are, Lord. Why? Because wherever we are, we take him with us. He already came to his temple. And he ain't going nowhere else. The final resting place, the final dwelling place, the final place of God is in the throne of your heart. That throne of God is forever. It's not established up in the sky. It's established in your heavens. I don't see this muscle as my heart. Now many Christians do. And I don't fall out with them because I understand what they mean. That's why I did this. Some think that there's something real in here with God and praise the Lord. If there is, there is. Go on and do it. And then some think it's up here. Praise the Lord. And if it is, I don't care if you put it in your feet, get her done. <laughs> Y'all have to forgive me today. But I, I like preachers that can stir you up. There's two kinds, those that can and those that can't. And I like to get behind either one. Brother Ron got this good <laughs> Listen to him. He said, he said, I counted it all dumb that I may win Christ and be found. Now, when was Paul lost? That's an English word in the Greek. It's not clear there. And I'm not a Greek scholar enough in six tenses of that language to figure out what tense it's in and why it's used. But in English, some, some guy with smarter language connections than me said, he used to really be found. How many know, I'll, if, if, you're, if you're looking for me, let me just say it like that. If you're looking for me, I hope you look into the mind of God, into the, the realm of God, into the spirit of God, because that's where you'll find me. If I ain't there, I need to be born again. Need an that's how you grade your paper. That's what Paul was telling them in Philippi. He wasn't condemning anybody. Wasn't putting anybody out. He said, but listen, Pam, listen, Jean, listen, Grace, listen, Gary, listen, Ron. You need to be found. Yes. You're not lost. You were lost and he found you. Now you need to be found. How many know where does he, he's the light that shines, but he tells you go shine as light. Right. They ain't gonna see your light as long as you don't shine it. What's the best place to shine that light? In the dark. In the dark. And so God's brought it. He's talking about today. He's bringing a people forth. Now he's got a people that he wants to bring forth. Yes, he does. Yeah. And, you, and they ain't going to see us in all of this mess out there. Come on. You, you turn the TV on. They can flip commercials. You used to you could do two commercial news back to the Lone Ranger. That's pretty much where I stayed and pretty cool. But now, I was watching the cartoons with my grandboys. He's watching Bluey, whoever she is. I thought it was a boy. And it's, it's a girl dog. And uh, Grace said, you're way behind. Said, that Bluey is a girl dog. <laughs> Since when? Since they made the show. And I'm watching that. Because it don't act like a girl dog. Well, we just leave it alone. Anyway, point, the, point, the point I'm trying, I just made my point. The, another point I'm trying to make is when the commercials came, they flipped 12 commercials. I counted them. And I'm thinking, what just happened? Where'd my Lone Ranger go? Come on, church, what am I saying in a deeper sense? We are not in the days of our childhood. We are not in the Pentecostal expression anymore. We are not in religion. 
as he said, we have come to the mount and to God. And the spirits of just men made perfect. I'm not going to re-preach this message. But that's a different place in God. And there's some people that are coming to that place, that are in that place, that are awakening to that place, that are getting used to that place. And that's where Paul said, we've got to be found. Any place left, they got the same thing out there. And now listen to me. Please don't be angry. Hear me with the, the right spirit. But if all we can do is sing, dance, shout, and speak in tongues, the charismatics got us beat. They got all the good guitar players, all the good voices in the music and the money. Sister Pam has to put her own bill for her CD. We all need to buy one today. Come on, help us out. She didn't tell me to say that. We all need to back her. Somebody said, I don't like that kind of music. We need to buy one anyway. I don't like opera very well. I like it. And not the way some of them do it. But I got all kinds of them. Wagner and, and uh, my first wife, Lisa, before she was tragically killed, collected all that stuff. And Puccini, and then here come this rocker come in, and he, he knew Chuck Berry. <laughs> I learned him off before. But listen, he says, and be found. I like that now. I can stay on that. Where? In him. Not having my own righteousness, and I could preach on that, but I'm not, which is of the law, but that which is through, here's your righteousness, church, great your paper. You should shout right here if you're in the right place. If you're bound in the right place, your, your righteousness should be through the faith of Christ. Amen. Not my own faith. Yes. I believe certain things, brother Ron, you, we and I have talked. I believe certain things. But some things I can't preach because I can't find it in Christ. And my right, I want to be found in Him. There's a lot of stuff I talk about. Y'all just go. And you say some stuff, I go, what? <laughs> Come on, we humans, aren't we? We're moving, we're, we're, we we got to get this revelation. We're not human. Our Father's a spirit now. After the day of Pentecost. Come on. I'm no longer a human. My Father's a spirit. Yes, I had natural parents, but now this movement. Can I use the word? I've evolved. Oh, dear God, a new age. No. If it is a new age, it's in Christ. But I mean, no. What evolving simply means to come forward. We have come. I've watched this brother right there evolve. Now, he ain't, you know, alien and all of that nonsense. But in the spirit realm, how many know we've all grown? How about Pastor Sheriff? She really grown. Come on. So, you know what? You know what? You know what? I don't like to brag on me, but thanks to Larry Turner, and I wasn't always a bishop, and then he stepped in and did that. Apparently, he saw something I didn't see, or he saw something that other men wanted. I don't know how it worked, but look around yourself. There's a little old girl a few years back named Pam. Wasn't named Pam, doctor. Named Pam. Running around here trying to play a piano, trying to sing. How about now? Come on, church. Come on. We need to stop living in yesterday. Yes. Yesterday is good, but that day is over. Yes. Maybe your yesterday was hell. Sometimes yesterday is, but that day is over. Yes. This is the day that the Lord has made. I didn't order this day. I didn't order the Biden, the Biden election. I didn't order the madman Putin. I didn't order death in the Ukraine in eight points. 9% inflation, $4 gasoline. I didn't order none of that. I got that on the menu. And that's the dish they serve me. I mean, no. Now, you can just walk away and be angry and cuss and quit church and, oh, or cry. Oh, what the devil is this? Oh, baloney. This is the day the Lord has made. He don't bring nothing on you that you can't. What's that last word? I didn't hear that. You can't didn't say anything. What is it, Pam? Bear. Yeah, it's not the animal. But he don't put nothing on you that you can't bear. He's not talking about an animal. You, he, what he says is, I'm not going to put nothing on you that you can't handle. Most of the stuff that gets put on us, we don't like to handle. Every time I go to the gas pump, 
I've got to slap myself in the mouth because I like to grumble. My wife's not a grumbler. She said, it don't matter what you say. Rap all you want. Look at the price. It didn't go down. <laughs> We've been married long. I said, won't you just mind your own business over there and find something to do? <laughs> she's going. I said, what is the matter with you? I'm looking to see if that price is going to go down. It ain't going down. Why are you grumbling? She won. But come on. Put that in the spirit. Come on. We, we, we can... We can get up and say today, good morning, God, or good God, it's morning. Your choice. But whatever you make of the darkness of this time is what it's going to be. And how many know he has brought a light into the darkness, not Jesus Christ, you and I. Christ in us. Christ in us. I can't do it without, but listen, he said, I might be found where? In him. This is the people right here. Not all of them, but I'm preaching to some of them because many of them are scattered all over the world. We just left one. Tremendous work down there in, uh, in, in Clayton, Georgia. Seven or eight preachers got together and actually flowed together. Spirit was one day. It was really good. One of the best meetings I've been in, in all year. Praise the Lord. I was just proud, glad to be part of it. But how many know there's a people now? He's not forming them. They're formed. But they're not quite finished. But they're born. He's got the people now. He's got them in the place of darkness. Look around. Everywhere you go, there's new little groups springing up. They're not in big church buildings because they can't afford to rent. They're not in uh, uh, big bands and groups yet. It's, you know, they're still too early. But hey, get ready. Get ready. As this darkness approaches and great darkness comes across. What does Isaiah say? And great darkness on the land. What is it, Isaiah 60? Quote with me. Arise, shine, for thy light. Oh, you didn't say he is coming. You said he has come. He has come means it's here. And the glory of the Lord, not religion, not prosperity, but the glory is risen upon you. For darkness, even gross darkness, shall cover the earth, but get on the right side of the butt. But I, the Lord, have raised up this people for this day. Amen. You are the people that he's brought into this day to make sure. Now get this. This, this, is, this is probably the most important thing I'm going to say all year. You are the people that have been brought forth into this day to make sure that that light of God shines in this day. Because I'm going to be honest with you. Look around. Like I said, watch your TV. I don't want to strike at nobody. I'm not putting nobody down. Johnny Avanzini and I are lifelong friends. I love that man. And if you watch his prosperity program, he's, he's, and he's really a great man. And he and I have been together since the Bill Britton era. Tells you how old we both are. <laughs> But listen, you look around and there's not a lot of activity. You don't see them getting saved very, very many places. There are still some do. Still some getting the Holy Ghost, still miracles. But what's, what, what's going on? And everywhere you look, the average Christian said, Oh, there ain't nothing happening, it's just dark. I'm quitting, I'm running to death. No, 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 no. He's putting some people together and placing. Hear that word placement. Placing them in a... Another, here's another word that they'll preach. Each one of these words will preach now. Placing them in a strategic... Woo! Yes. Look at somebody say, I'm in a strategic spot today. In a strategic spot. How many believe that? you got to believe it. you got to believe it. But he's placed them in a strategic place. Follow the evolution of this church. Pastor Turner transferred over to the other side. For whatever reason God wanted to do. Leave it there. And this woman was raised up to put in the place. For whatever reason. I don't look at what happened. I'm looking at what's happening. And then I look around. And here you are. Somebody besides you. Placed you. In this place. Not to twiddle your thumbs. Not to 
sit and occupy a pew, but before a strategic reason. Now you hear the evil voice say, well, I ain't no preacher. I don't have a lot of money. I can't sing. Okay. Can I tell you what is also going on, maybe? Go downtown to the, to the uh, gas station and get you some gas. And don't do like me and grumble at the pump. Just go down there and stand. And act silly. <laughs> and when you do, you'll start going. And, oh, and all that's just funny, isn't it? But you know what? Here's the spirit side. And you know this. Somebody is watching you. Somebody's looking at you. Somebody needs somebody like you. Are you hearing me today? Amen. I'm on a whole different wavelength today. I don't know. Maybe Ron brought it in. Uh, maybe the praise. Maybe I woke up that way. I don't know. Fell two or three days ago and been limping and gimping. And this first day I've asked if that like being alive. So maybe that's what it is. But, but here's the word of the Lord. So you, you think you just wandered into that place to teach? Ah, uh, ah. Uh, Father put you there, yes. and there's reasons. Yes. Hear what I'm saying. Where, where, wherever you are in God, I, I don't care who you are, how little you are. My little old grandson Zion, he, he got the Holy Ghost was born with it. But because his mama and all of them don't believe in none of that, he hadn't spoken in tongues in years. And uh, we was in a place, and a little boy was possessed, and he's speaking like an adult, and using language that that four-year-old boy can't possibly learn. And I'm trying not to get, I'm trying to cast it out, but not make a Pentecostal thing because none of them believe it anyway. Ain't none of them even saved. And you can make things worse. I may know that. With your religion. Not the real deal. The real deal works, but your religion. And I have not arrived. There's things, that's the my dear, I spoke by permission on some things because I ain't smart enough and spiritual enough to get it exactly right. But I know what's supposed to happen to some degree, and so do you. Yes. So I'm working with that little boy trying to do it. And Zion don't know no better. He just goes and gets a Bible. He's got the Holy Ghost. He ain't used it in 10 years. But he goes and gets a Bible. He don't know how to cast no demon out. Thank God, because he may have stirred up 17 or 18 more. But he got the Bible and opens it up and reads John 3:16. That thing, ah, ah, ah. okay. And he looks at me and his eyes are about as big as softballs. I said, you're doing good, son. Just keep on. He don't know what to do, and I ain't telling him either. Because he's got the Holy Ghost. All of a sudden, he just laid hands on that boy. He looked at him. He scared himself because he hadn't spoken to him for 10 years. Something came out of him. Something put there by a holy being. The God, what we call God, what we call Jesus, what we call the Holy Ghost, not spirit, we call it ghost. It is spirit. I understand that. But I like the word ghost. That's what I got when I got it. I, I ain't fighting with people. If you, if you got the Holy Spirit, we're in the same game. It's a different name. And, and that, that boy squatted it down right away. The spirit didn't come out. But that manifestation stopped. Now what am I trying to say? At the right time, at the right place, that that's in you will, will come forth. It will. I've got to get to where I'm going, but there's somebody pulling this today. And be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. Here's the verse I want to get. That I may know him. Mark this one, the 10th verse. That I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. There's four basic things to that. He said that I may know him. Now I'm not a Greek scholar, but Greek is a six tense language. It's an if and then language. English ain't none of that. So trying to translate it is a nightmare to a linguistic person. And they got and most some people just don't dedicate their whole life to that. They don't know nothing about the spirit or nothing, but they know what that Bible says through language. 
And uh, being an English teacher, I have somewhat knowledge of that. But Greek is hard. Now that word no there in the Greek. But when you look up, you go to Strong's. Now you got cell phones, got all them. You can go right to the Greek. Brother can go right there and find it. There's Gnosko, which we get Gnostics, Gnostics, knowledge. There's Progenosko, Apogenosko, and Progenosko, and Proapogenosko. There's four or five words there for knowledge. And then there's this, this, that ain't none of them. Then there's this one. It's Oida, O-I-E-D-A in the Greek. Oida, Oida, I don't know how to even say it. But it ain't Genosko. A Genosko means head knowledge. I know certain things. I know that man back there with glasses. I know his name. His name is Ron. Mm -hmm. I'm still in my right mind. When I woke up this morning, I actually knew who my wife was. And could call her by name. There's been a few times I had to think about what you, when you, you get a, some of y'all that's older, you, you know, sometimes I don't know who I am. But I always know who he is. How many understand you? Got to take a break, it's getting too serious. <laughs> but he said that I may know him. That word know, Oida, is it, it means intimacy. Praise the Lord, yes, sir. Actually, and I'm not trying to be rated R, but it, it's best expressed in our language through a, 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 a loving act between a husband and a wife, yes. the most, and, and, and every, it would actually translate in every aspect, the most uh, closest you could get to your wife yes. uh, or husband in every category. So yes, you, can, you can fill in the blanks. Yes. But that's how intimate it is. It doesn't connect with eros, which is a word for love, means sensual. It does not connect with philio in the Greek, which is brotherly love or sisterly love or even uh, marital love. It connects with agape, A-G-A-P-E, yes, yes. unconditional. Amen. So when they translate that, you can't translate oida without agape. Oida, O-E-I-D-A, A-G-A-P-E. Then you have to make the pronouns, the participles and all that to get the connection. And that's just, you don't need to know none of that. But what it's leading to is this. It, when we read it then, he said that I may know him, that I may have more than a head knowledge of him. That I may have more than just being able to read my Bible. More than going to church. More, back up here, more than all that I got. All I got there. I do not have to count that. There's more, and I want that more, which is an intimacy of an excellency which is placed strategically. Woo! I'll insert shout right there. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. How many hear me? Now listen, how does he know him then? Listen, I want you to get the, you should, you should put a little note in the Bible. That's for me. I want to know him intimately. Yes. I spent my life studying this book. I got a bunch of genosco and genosis and all of that stuff a degree and I'll be preaching this is my 48th year and, and travel the world eight times hallelujah all that when I go down here in town bucket and a half buy me a cup of coffee but in my own life I dedicated my life to this book the study of it taking it apart putting it together and all that and so that if I if, if it been found in me I could bless God's people I didn't do it for myself if I did something for myself we'd go fishing that's what I so that's my mad passion so you can see the difference but with the work he's brought in me but he, he wants us to know him intimately not just the Savior I wouldn't trade my salvation for nothing I was a rotten drunk and he saved me he saved me I wouldn't trade the baptism of the Holy Ghost for nothing I was just an intellectual college person asking questions getting kicked out of churches no answers, no nothing Ask the philosophers, ask the Shaolin Buddhists. Nobody knew the answers. He gave me the Holy Ghost and the answers started coming along. Can you say amen? Y'all been down the same road? But all of that, Paul said, I count as a lesser thing that I might gain Christ, the excellency, the intimacy. I'm after something today. Have you got it, Brother Gary? No, that's why I'm fishing. But Brother Ron, I believe we've hooked it. And we're reeling it in. We're bringing it in. I believe today, and i got to wind up. I know you all get tired. So let, me, let me finish. Because how do you know him? That I may know him, and that I may know intimately the power of his resurrection. Not the power to 
lay hands and cast out spirits. And that too. But not the power to heal the sick and raise the dead. That too. But the power of his resurrection. Part of that means that I know. Now that one is genosis. That I can understand intellectually and in every way. I know this man went to a cross and died for me. That this man was buried for me. That this man rose for me. And sat at the right hand of the Father. And sits at the right hand of the Father for me. And has set me in his, his throne as you brought, as, I, as he has set with the Father in his throne. And that's what I want to have an intimacy with. That what he is, I am. And don't get scared that I am. They brought that earlier and they didn't have the scriptures and the knowledge. But he's bringing it now and it's balance. And how many know all you're ever going to be when you're done is God? So I'm going to tell you I'm God today. So obviously I'm not. So I'm not coming here and It's like this. All that I'm supposed to be is what he is. So when I reach my destiny, I'm God. But all that you're supposed to be is what he is. So when you meet your destiny, you're God. I mean, you, know, you can't get out of God. And the more the more we see Him, the bigger He gets. So you're not saying I am only. No, I am that part. I mean, no. If you go to this church, you're the church. But everybody knows you're not the only one there. But you are that part. That says right there, the empty seat. We know you're missing. Something's missing because you're the church. But she's not the only. There's the church. That dance was super. And the, the, the stuff, I love that stuff. Choreograph, I guess it's called. Signing. And, and, and my brother back there, we, we social distancing today, and I understand that. But I, I, if he's not there, because he's the church. I mean, everybody said, like, well, you just said, I would. hear what I'm saying. I want to know in an intimate way that I am part of that resurrection. And he didn't just resurrect for me. He made me part of it. How many know? Most Christians know that the Lord died for them. Know that the Lord built them. But they don't know that they're part of it, an integral part of it. That, and he, what does he say? I'll give you scripture. He said, you are, you are, not going to be, you are, he, I think one translation says, you are now bone of my bone and flesh. We don't like that word, but Jesus said it. And flesh of my flesh. You're not your own. You were bought with a price. But, now those are the things I want to know. Beyond the shadow of a doubt, when the enemy says to you, you're backsliding, you quit, you, you're dying, you're all this, you're all that, God has left you, I said, that's a lie. How can he, if he's home and I feel his presence, and I, how many know if I'm part, actually get more intimate. If I am part of him and he's part of me, that's intimate. Then how could he leave me without taking me with him? I'm a little too serious. I'll tell you a light one came home from Oregon had been on the road way too long. The zeal of my house had eaten me up and my wife was sitting there with me. She said, I'm about to pack a bag. I said, why? She said, I just can't handle it. I can't do this no more. And I said, well, I'll start packing too. She said, well, what are you doing? I said, I'm going with you. She said, how come? I said, I can't stand living with me either. <laughs> I put that in the intimacy. I'm closing. I'm closing. <laughs> that I might know him in the power of his resurrection. And if you can't get out of this, this is where we are. This is part of the darkness. The fellowship. I mean, no, fellowship means Ron and I. Not Ron just likes me and I'm too busy for him. It is Ron and I. Not that he's busy working all the time and I never say. How I many know fellowship is a two-way street no matter who it is, what it is, how it is. I don't come here to dominate her. I don't come here to preach for her. I don't come here to I come here to fellowship with her because she's my sister. I need the fellowship. Now, if you need a preacher or something, then that's my turn. However, God does it, see. You you gotta understand fellowship is a two-way street, and the fellowship of his suffering, in that he suffered, we suffer. I'm gonna leave it there and go on. Got one more thing to say. And being made 
conformable. Obviously, I'm not, or he wouldn't put that in there. But he's making me conformable unto his death. And he's not talking about literal death there. How many know when nothing that happens out here, you touched on this too, when, when, when Joe Biden don't bother you no more, when that madman in Russia don't bother you no more, when COVID don't bother you no more, in other words, you're not afraid of it, you're not going to do anything negative about it, you're going to walk on in Christ, I'm going to church today. Well, you know that uh, uh, there could be a nuclear attack and this whole country could blow up. Well, then my church will be in heaven, whatever it all is. You see, we've got to be made conformable unto his death. He embraced his death. He embraced it with a, with, with a passion. That's what the movie, The Passion of the Christ. He embraced, I'm not embracing death with passion, but I want to embrace his conformity. The, the emotions he had. Ah, ah, I'm for the church. Ah, I'm for you, brother. Ah, I'm for my wife. I'm for this pastor. Somebody said, you ain't even going to be there for another what, however long. It will make no difference. I want to be made conformable. Yeah. Create your paper. How many Christians you know are Christians, good Christians, but they're not conformable to much? Final statement. There was two crowns Jesus wore. We always preach a crown of righteousness, a crown of good, crown of glory. We're all looking for that crown. I really... We know it ain't natural, but used to we believed it was natural. We can get that crown of gold. And we saw Queen Elizabeth, they had one for years. <laughs> Never mind. But there's two crowns. The first crown Jesus put on was the crown of thorns. Now I'm going to say a nasty mean statement, but don't, don't take it that way. Because it's mostly to me. If he wore the crown of thorns third first, what makes me think I'm going to get out of putting on one? Oh, self-righteous bishop. I'm too holy. You don't see no sin in me. Oh, yeah? <laughs> that quiet. We're coming, and we are in that place. Get ready, folks. I got to quit. Get ready, because God is going to do things this time around that you have no idea. You can't even imagine. It ain't going to be Pentecost. It's going to be Passover, Pentecost, Tabernacles. A threefold manifestation in a sevenfold realm because there's seven feasts in there. And you've got sevenfold light of God coming in a threefold manifestation all on you. And I don't know if I can swallow and eat that or not. Would you come get this stuff, Grace? I, 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 we got to run, I know, because dinner's past ready. If anybody has a need today, I don't want to just preach and teach and make everybody upset and stuff. Hope I didn't upset you. Hope you hear me with a balance. Uh, uh, we're, we're in a new day, and the old preaching don't work. And, and don't take it in condemnation. That ain't even in my mind. We are moving in something, and we're going to have to find a way to get through it. People are going to die, people quitting, and people are afraid. And we got perfect love, cast out all fear. We got to do that. Anybody need prayer? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. If you do, please come. Let's come quickly. And uh, let's, let's, I don't need to rush, rush, and hurry. You're back? Back in here. Thank you, Lord. Turn right over here. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Yes. Father, right now, we do a chiropractic yes. adjustment on that sciatic, on that back, the hip. The rear end, whatever, however it goes in and out and up and down. You are the maker of this temple. Yes. You are the maker and the creator. Yes. You didn't make